Hello and welcome to Fresh Perspectives. My name is Gail. And um, this is going to be a really interesting episode. This is somebody who was recommended to me, uh, just like um, Jen Overfield, who was on a while back, uh, by Colleen Vanderzyden. Um, the topics we're going to touch on today are tapping and uh, feng shui for children with special needs. Um, thank you. Her name is Charlotte Orth. Thank you, Charlotte, thank you for, for coming me. on today. Um, now, how is it that you know Colleen Vanderzyden? Um, well, I went to Lilydale to a couple of her classes and really enjoyed them and benefited from them. So then I ended up doing coaching with Colleen, which is amazing. Like anyway, spiritual? Um, um, she does um, life coaching. Life coaching, yes, spiritual yes. life coaching. Yes. Yeah, and it was yeah. absolutely amazing. So if you ever get a chance, it's a, a definite to do. Um, and just still continue to go to her workshops or anything that she puts on, I try to attend if I can. Yeah, she's a lot of fun to have on Fresh Perspectives. I yes. managed to get her on approximately once a year. I wish I could get her on more often, <laughs> but she tends to be awfully busy. Um, but uh, she's really a lot of fun. She has a humorous way of telling yes. story, yes. The, the stories. Yep. Um, now, there's, uh, we'll start out by talking about tapping, okay. and I would like you to uh, explain what tapping is to the viewing audience. Okay. Tapping is freedom emotional tapping. It works on um, acupuncture points that we have in our body, and um, you do it with a sequ sequence of, uh, uh, there's a way of doing it sequence to make it be effective and work. So. Um, like, would you like me to demonstrate? Like, I, I would like to explain the tapping points. Okay. 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 So the tapping points that we have that we're going to be using for this is um, your eyebrow. Well, first you would start with a karate chop, and you would say a statement. Like, um, we'll just use for an example, um, like, I am nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I am nervous. So we're going to just tap and say, um, and um, even though I am nervous to be on this show, I am going to be okay. Even though I am nervous to be on this show, I am going to be okay. So you would like tap on your, you start with the karate chop right here. Oh, This okay. is considered the karate chop. You start on this point. Okay. And then you would move to this point. Okay. And then you just keep saying like, I am okay. I understand this. And then you would move to your eyebrow because this is another point. Your eyebrow. Yep, both you can sides. do both. You can do one hand or you can do both hands. Mm -hmm. um, I am okay, this is going to be okay. And then the um, other point is right here underneath your eyes, on your eyelids. I am okay, I am calm. And then I understand this, I under, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You just say a positive statement about mm -hmm. what your anxiety mm -hmm. is about. And then you would go to your, your chin, this is another one. You know, like mm -hmm. I, um, I am calm, I am relaxing. And then the last one would be your chest. Hmm. That, then you would tap on your chest and then you just do these like five to seven repetitive steps until you feel calm. Oh, and you then mean you go, go through the whole thing mm -hmm. for seven And then you would go to your arm, you could hold it like this and do your underarm. And then after you're done doing that sequence, yep, yeah, just you do them a few times seeing your positive statement. And then after you're done with them, then you would, um, you would again like assess where you started. Like when you started it, you would assess either on a piece of paper or in your mind or even with your arms, like where am I on a scale of one to 10 on the anxiety, the fear of the phobia, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then you would assess it, like say if you were the 10 or the nine, then you did that motion with all the points mm -hmm. of what we, I just showed you. Mm -hmm. And then you would do it for like around to five to 10 minutes till you felt calm. Then you would stop and assess again. That, Cause that was one round that I showed you. You would stop and assess again and um, we'll take a deep breath in and out. Then you would assess again where you're at on, where you're at on that scale and hopefully it would gone down. And if you haven't gone down enough and you feel comfortable, then you would just keep repeatedly doing the acupuncture points until you um, until you reach yep, okay. until you reach the count. Okay. Point. Now, does this work? I mean, if somebody has a phobia of being 
let's say where the ground is real flat for an expanse of width uh, and there's no trees, there's no hills, if they're, uh, they have a phobia of that too much openness or something like mm -hmm. that, um, can it help with things like that? Absolutely, it helps with, um, like say if you have a phobia of spiders, anxiety, um, fear, depression, like if you're, a little kid's going to be taking a test in school, um, there's some this tapping they can do very fastly to help calm them and calm their anxiety so that they can focus. Um, it works on everything and anything. So if there's anything that you're trying to, um, you need help with controlling it or you want to be calm or to get over the fear of it, this is absolutely good for it. Just try it, you know, mm -hmm. and it will help with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well that's that's pretty interesting. Um, let's see. Now, it, do, can it do anything? Uh, does it help people uh, change unhealthy habits to healthy habits? Absolutely. It's um, it, like if you weight loss or anything. Um, again, like um. Yeah, smoking, you know, it can help reduce that. And you would, again, just set your sequence up. And it's the same rhythm motion every time. Like you would set your sequence up where you feel about it on a scale of 1 to 10. And then you would, you know, even though, you know, I have a, um, I continue to smoke, I, I'm going to be healthy and stop. Even though I have, I continue to smoke, I am going to be healthy and stop. And then you would just do your rounds on your, points and then you would again when you're all done take a deep breath in and out and then you would again um, assess your scale as to where you're at mm -hmm. and then if you needed to do more mm -hmm. so yes it, well uh, as far as smoking goes um, I think there's quite a few people that still smoke <laughs> and people that take up smoking and so forth um, now when they get this urge to smoke, because I guess it is kind of a withdrawal symptom mm -hmm. type of experience that people get, which is when they light up a cigarette. Um, now, when they feel that urge coming on, will, um, if they do this tapping method, can it, postpone smoking Absolutely. that cigarette yeah. for yep. a while. Yep. And uh, I just wondered about yep. that. Yep, they would just do on the table points and come up with a positive statement like, um, just for now, even though I want the cigarette, I'm not going to have it. Even though I want the cigarette, I'm not going to have it. And then they would be, you know, like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm okay. I don't need a cigarette. My, my, nerves are, my nerves are calm. I don't need to smoke. I am okay. Oh, this urge has left me. I don't need to do any smoking right now. I am okay. And then you would just keep on tapping and just keep saying positive statements like that. And then you would, when you're all done, you would say, take a deep breath in and out and then assess. And hopefully you'll be like, wow, I don't need that cigarette right now. <laughs> yeah, I know with practicing yoga, um, uh, I never was in the habit of smoking or anything, but there were other things that I could postpone needing to do uh, if I did certain a certain yoga breathing exercise. It would postpone. Uh, it would postpone needing to do that particular yes. thing. Yeah. Yes. So like if like if a child was having the anxiety for taking a test, doing the tapping round before the test would help postpone that anxiety or, or help reduce it so they'd be able to function and get through the test with a good score, hopefully. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, let's see here. Um, without mentioning any names of anybody that you have worked with with this tapping, uh, do you have any um, interesting stories you can tell us that people have had some successes with? Uh, we've already talked about smoking, but are yeah. there some other uh, oh. situations that you've witnessed? That yep, I can discuss my grandchildren. My grandchildren, I use this on them a lot. I have ADHD grandchildren, and um, they have trouble sleeping. So, like, um, 
in sensory overload, like I have a grandson that when we are in public places, he instantly gets sensory overload. And, you know, the impulse behavior comes in and you're in public and you're like, oh, goodness. So if you just do these rounds of tapping with him, like I am calm in that, it does help do that. Um, when they have a trouble going to sleep, they, you know, winding down from the days and getting our mind chatter to stop. It very, for sleep, very good for helping to sleep. Mm -hmm. This also helps with. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, when I was a little girl in elementary school, not only did I develop uh, an anxiety disorder in early high school, but um, I remember I had trouble sleeping I think maybe I was expected to go to bed too early in the <laughs> evening. Uh, my parents always made us go to bed, you know, right. uh, when there was school the next day at 8 o'clock in the <laughs> evening. And I would always, there was a clock that would ring the hour every hour. And um, I would hear that thing strike 3 o'clock every night, 3 a.m., before I finally went to sleep. Oh, goodness. And I think I probably felt tired a lot during the day as a result of it. I probably, I probably could have, I yes. probably could have gotten away with waiting yes. till nine or 10 o'clock to go to bed, <laughs> you know. Right. So, um, so I, I think probably I was kind of destined, you know, I was, this was maybe early warning signs too of, um, of the anxiety d disorder coming up, would come on later, the fact that I had trouble sleeping. So yeah. I may have had some uh, hyperactive, uh, hyperactivity disorder right. when I was a little girl. <laughs> right. Anyway. Yeah, but sure does help with that. And like my one little granddaughter, when she got on the school bus, I remember the one year, she was so anxiety about getting on the school was bus. Was this and, the first day? Yes. <laughs> and it was, she was only like in first grade. And I'm thinking, oh, this poor child, she's going to have a heart attack. She, so we just did a couple rounds of tapping. And by the time the bus came, she was all calm. She got on the bus, turned around and waved. And she went on to school and grandma stood there bawling, you know, but it got her through the moment at the time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when very beneficial where you're having that moment, like if you walk into Walmart, Walmart and you get overwhelmed and all of a sudden like the lights start bothering you or something and you get overwhelmed in that and start anxiety kicks in sometimes, you can go to the restroom and just do a couple rounds of these and next thing you know you'll be, you'll realize that you're all nice <laughs> and calm and you'll be able to <laughs> go back out to the Walmart and continue on with your shopping. Does this mean that going to Walmart <laughs> is an overwhelming <laughs> experience <laughs> for you? So Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> that big list and a little bit of money, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. And the prices of things have gone through the roof yes. lately, haven't they? Yes. I wonder what having a pandemic has to do with <laughs> bringing on inflation, you know. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so basically, that's it. Um, uh, now, um, before we forget, instead of waiting till the end of the program, um, I'm, I'm going to have you tell people uh, now how they can get a hold of okay. you if they need uh, your help or. Okay, I am on. Um, I have a Facebook page called Char Soul Charm. I um, also have an email address Soul Charm One at yahoo.com. Um, I have a phone number. On that fa all my contact information is on that Facebook page. And I also am going to be working out of Barkstorm Acupuncture with Jen Overfield um, in Jamestown. So you can either call there and set up an appointment as well. Oh, okay, that's good. That, that's really good. Okay, now it sounds like we have a lot that we can say about feng shui. Okay. Um, well, first of all, I, I, I'm going to back up a moment here. You, uh, I'm going to have to have you back on again because there are several <laughs> things that you said that you are certified to do. Mm -hmm. And um, taking your time uh, without talking too fast. <laughs> 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 yeah, so that the um, viewing audience can... Okay. Uh, understand what you mean is 
What are all of the different things you do besides the tapping? Okay, um, so I am a Feng Shui partitioner, house space clearing blesser. I am um, a Reiki master, I'm a shaman master, um, and I can also do the, I also do the raindrop technique, which is with Young Living Essential Oils, and it works on the trigger points on your spine to help with anything like anxiety, depression, um, helps line your spine, helps with upper and lower back pain. But the essential oils that I use, they're absolutely the beneficial properties that mm -hmm. they have. They have so many different beneficial oh, okay. properties. So, so basically you're applying these oils yep. to yep. these different uh, places. Along, on the spine, on, on the, the spine. spine. It's a okay. massage. It's a oh, technique okay. on the spine Okay. with the different essential oils, doing different, um, different hand techniques. Okay. Um, and, and then real quick, I'd like you to mention how you got into these forms of okay. natural healing. Well, it all started with me. Um, I'm ADHD, and I can remember my whole life trying to like stay calm, be calm, and it was very hard. And there was never nothing. It was back in the day. It was you followed the golden rule, and that was it. And then I had my grandchildren, and of course my children as well. But and my grandchildren were all ADHD, and um, <laughs> it sure it, does run in the family. Yeah. <laughs> and it was you know like it was always like a struggle, and I'm like. There has to be a better, easier way for this. And I do have a couple grandchildren with also learning disabilities. So it was like, what can I do to help make them function to the best of their ability without killing their spirit? Because their spirit and their energy is very important. And um, we sometimes in society, because we don't know what to do with it or how to regulate it, we sort of like want to calm it down instead of learning how to work with it. Mm -hmm. So that was like my overall with my grandchildren. I didn't want them to not be who they are, but I wanted them to also be able to be calm and to focus and benefit from life the way that they should. And if you're always in your own chatter mind, you're not going to be getting that. So it all started with them. Um, it started with me trying to figure out how to help my granddaughter. My one granddaughter had the ADHD and um, she really had a hard time focusing and she wasn't doing well and they wanted the medication and we were like, oh, okay. So we did the medication, but for some reason, the medication in her body just didn't like connect. It wasn't working together. So then the poor teachers call me going, well, this is not working. She, the poor thing can't stay awake. She's not focusing. She's totally missing class. And I'm like, oh my goodness, what do we do? So we went back to watching what she ate again and watching what she did and make sure her sleep pattern was good. And then, um, I just started researching, taking every course that I could as to what I could with these th natural ways to help. And that's how I got into the tapping. So we started doing the tapping to help with her anxiety and the focus. And then, um, then I became the Reiki master to help make sure our chakras are in line and we stay grounded. Being grounded is very important for anything. And then um, here I am. Now I just keep going as to what mm -hmm. to do next. And then that's how the whole feng shui started because mm -hmm. we did the... Um, you know, like I had was working on the outside physical world and then we would come home and all the behaviors would come back because they were home, you know, because every soul loves their house and we'd love mm -hmm. to go to our house and that's our little safe haven domain of, you know, peace and quiet and then they're like being them and I'm like, oh no, this isn't working out very well. <laughs> we had a bunch of chaotic energy going on. Oh, no. and it was like, oh, what do we do here? So then I had to start looking at things that I had wrong in my house that mm -hmm. I could change to yeah. help them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, um, I want to uh, mention this Reiki. Um, yeah. You mentioned being a Reiki master. Um, I've been um, running the Chautauqua County Vegetarian Vegan Society for quite a long time. And um, anyways, um, one time uh, several years back, we had a lady from Fredonia, Tony Jo Mitchell. I don't know if you've heard of her or not. No, but she, uh, one of the things she does is Reiki. She has one of those herbal type shops where you can, oh. you can buy things. And um, anyways, we had her come to uh, one of our dinners to speak about Reiki one time. And she wanted somebody, a volunteer, that she could demonstrate the Reiki on. And I volunteered, and she asked me if I had any pain. Well, yes, I 
was really feeling really sore and I could tell it was the kind of thing that wasn't going to clear up by itself that I was going to have to go to the chiropractor for. Mm -hmm. So I told her, yes, I have this pain on the left side of my neck and in my left shoulder and it was hurting really bad. I mean, this is knowing for sure that I was going to have to call a chiropractor in the morning. Well, she held her hands there for a brief period of time, and I didn't notice anything right then. But the next morning when I woke up and I went to get out of bed, <laughs> I was totally pain-free. The Reiki energy had taken care of the adjustment. Yeah, yeah. That's a very <laughs> so, powerful, beautiful. So I'll have to have you back on another time <laughs> okay. to talk about some of these other things yeah. that you do. Okay. So um, after we get through uh, recording today's episode, um, I'll get my calendar out okay. and you can pick a date. <laughs> can I explain some other um Tapping points, like oh, if you're okay. out in public and oh, that, okay. like, like if you're out in public and that, and you're like, oh, I don't really like the idea of tapping all over um, our hands. We can just do tapping. Just with do our, the hands. Tapping with our hands, and it's the same beneficial property. Um, you would tap right at the end of your nail. You would just take your fingers and you would say your, you know, your affirmation mm -hmm. statement of even though, mm -hmm. even though, and then you would just tap on this one and then you would tap this finger just like this, all of these, but then when you get to the ring finger, just will go to the opposite side, and then you would do these rounds. So if you're out in public with your children or yourself and you're like, oh my goodness, I gotta like public speak and I really, I've never done this before and I'm a little <laughs> nervous, you know? <laughs> you um, can use the, your, your fingers, and this also is the same, you're on your acupuncture points. Oh. That will actually, this is another form of tapping. Oh, okay. okay? okay. And this works very well with children in school. Like if you're in an assembly and like a chorus concert and they're gonna be going on, they can do this to themselves to help calm themselves. Mm -hmm. um, another one is your wrist. Very good oh. acupuncture point. Very good point. It is for- Is um, it where the pulse normally? Just where right you in here, normally? just right here. Just like right here on your wrist. So that's a very, and you can see how it feels a little soft right there? Like when you're- Oh yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. That's like your acupuncture point there. This is for nauseous. This is for babies. If you have a baby that has like um, a tummy problem or anything, or even an older child, this works very well on this. Works well for nauseous. Um, car sickness, morning sickness, you can just tap right here and it will help calm them. And then like if you also have like a little baby and the baby's like colic or having, you know how some babies don't like to go to sleep and that like you would just have the baby up on your shoulder and you would take these two fingers and go down their spine and you would just do this On the motion. side to the side of the each spine. spine of the, yep, each side of the spine and you would just do up and this and down and again do your whole sequence of, you know, process and then until the baby will come. Amazing how this calms a baby. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. And another thing is your your feet. The, the tapping points on your feet, unbelievable how reflexology has a lot of great benefits for oh, that. Oh, that would be on the soles of on your feet? On the soles of your feet. You just okay. work on the um, acupuncture points on your feet. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. I used to get acupuncture uh, treatments once upon a time it was when I was going through menopause I I, I got <laughs> acupuncture for the uh, mental symptoms <laughs> that, that come with uh, yeah. that come with going through with menopause <laughs> <laughs> okay um, now uh, describe to the viewing audience um, what feng shui is and how people can use it to ben benefit themselves. Okay, feng shui is the energy of your house. Um, it, everything needs to be flowing like in a yin and yang position, like together flowing. Um, it's in every way of it, like, um, mm. like not like not opening your kitchen table to the full width. <laughs> yeah, keep so it that, So that you can't open the door yeah. to the... Yeah, keep it your flow and your energy concept. It is, you know, <laughs> the zen energy in your house. <laughs> okay. So basically it's something that you do with your house, not away from home then. 
Yep, you do this with your house. With yep. your own house. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Well, you could do it to your office space. You can do it like if you had a daycare center, you could do it with that, like set it all up to get the flow of the energy properly and right. And um, like there's certain positions for things like um, a command, command position. Do you understand what that is? Like that's very important in feng shui. And, oh, okay, this w a command position yeah. would be something uh, the adult would do like... This is for everything in your house, like for, for adults or children, or um, just it's the placement of your furniture and the placement of your things. Mm -hmm. Like pos command position is very important to all of us. We need to feel secure and our energy has to flow in the right proper way. So like if your bed is in the wrong position, you won't sleep properly. If it can mess with your sleep schedule, if do you know, like if you're couch and your chair are not in the right flowing command position like if you have an office and you don't have your desk or your chair like say if you're in a off have an office and you're in a room and you have your desk and your chair back to the wall that is not a very good command position because are you the, your energy's not flowing right and you're not being able to view so you as a person don't feel comfortable with that. So it's all about Now, do you mean that the desk should, you should be able to, when you're sitting at your desk, face the door to yep. the room, yep. to the office? Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. That's why with your table, with your question earlier, <laughs> like being in the middle of the room, it's not a good flow of, that's not a good command position. So keep it And especially, especially like if like. the door can't right, be if opened can't, yes. if you have the table. You're there. blocking off your energy flow. <laughs> we won't we won't tell the viewing audience how this came up. <laughs> but they're probably wondering about it. Um, now um, you use it to help children with uh, feng shui to help children with special needs. Um, how did you figure out you could help the these children with it probably from experience seeing it within your own family right right um probably everybody too just telling me that oh you're so good at this why are you not doing this um you need a lot of that reinsurance when you start anything i'm just trying to figure out with my grandchildren and i like i love interior design i love the whole feng shui and i've always believed like my my house is my zen zone you know it's your safe zen place to be so that was very important for me to get that with my grandchildren so it just started with like what can i do to make this work it started with colors like um i have one grandson that um struggles sometime with like um wanting to sleep way too much or like a little the depression in there oh yeah would come to find mm -hmm. out i had his bedroom a very very dark blue not very good for depression. a dark shade of a blue. dark shade of blue is not good for depression so then i learned with that then the command center i had some of the beds so the kids weren't feeling comfortable and safe and secure it, they weren't sleeping as good or sound mm -hmm. um and like uh, another one of my grandchildren clutter she does not like clutter mm -hmm. she had likes very minimal things in there mm -hmm. and it matters how they were spaced you oh, know okay so okay just started working with that so then it's just like the color and i work with the families and i work with the children or even adults if that's what you want like what is your goal what is your outcome what are you looking to get and i go in there with the attitude attitude of intention goals where energy flow so i'm there to help you make your home your tranquil space Okay, so did you change the color of the bedroom? Then? I did. So for the grandson, I did change the color of the bedroom, and I had to change the position of his bed. I didn't have that. What and color did you change it to? to? He still wanted to stay in the blue. So light blue light is blue. very tranquil, very okay. grounding color, okay. a very good color. Okay, but yeah. definitely not dark blue if you yep. tend to be get depressed. Yep, not dark blue if you tend to get depressed. Mm -hmm. But if you have like a workout room and you need a little bit of energy to keep focusing on your workout, a little bit of orange. Oh. Orange is a very lifting and brings energy color. Oh, yep. okay. Uh, I also heard that about red. Yep, red is the same <laughs> way. Yep, yep. So. But if you need a little bit like your... Yeah, you're trying to have a space where you want it a little lively. A little bit of red is very good. Mm -hmm. um, pink for children with autism. Oh, um, pink. even if they're a boy. Well, um, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that would be on the parents' discretion. But you can have a little bit of pink something in there, I guess. Something but, um, pink. Yeah, at least but pink is a very some... good 
color, okay. calming color for autism. Oh, oh that's good, yeah. good. Um, okay, now in the case of me being awake until 3 a.m. every morning yeah. uh, when I had school the next day when I was a little girl, um, now it was a very small be bedroom. I mean, there was only room for the bed and the dresser. Okay. So, um, your I don't, position I don't think, probably the only thing that could have been done would have been to turn the bed so it was, instead of the wall that it was up against, I mean, it was practically the length and length of the, the bedroom. Uh, the only thing that could have been done was to have it, it was the bed and the dresser was all there was room for in the room. Okay. And there was some hooks to hang clothing on and I'm thinking, you know, the only thing that could have been yeah. done would have been to have the bed facing instead of, uh, for, let's see, the head of the bed was towards the west and the foot of the bed towards the east. Would uh, a north-south type of yep, that thing does, that would does, have been that better? That does plan to some of it. Like, uh, yeah, I would. I have a map of a bagua that I would go on and see, like where your floor plan is and certain directions for certain things. Mm -hmm. Like what you're trying to bring in to mm -hmm. your house would be very important for me to work with at that. Mm -hmm. But like my question would be to you, um, in that situation, would have been like, how were you to lights? Like light was light sensitive problem for you. Did you have a lot, a lot of light coming in your bedroom that it could have kept you up? Um, uh, there was no street light or anything okay. outside okay. of it. You know, maybe so. if you know, maybe if you had dark, darker curtains on your window, that might have helped. Um, like a, another great thing for sleep is um, if you have darker sheets, like in earth tones, the browns oh. or black. Or I, I think back in those days, sheets were mostly white. plain white. Right, we're where talking, if you had a darker we're color. We're talking about the 1950s, you know. <laughs> yeah, like maybe a weighted blanket would have been good for you. Maybe you needed that extra weight. A weighted, weighted blanket. You know, I don't think they manufactured yep, them right. back then. <laughs> You would have had to have what was known as a uh, um, feather bed to cover yeah. up with or yeah. something like that. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I was just wondering since I brought the subject up right. earlier. Um, now, have, now you help people other than just your grandchildren? Have you done things yes. Yes. with other, uh, other people? Oh, yes. Yep. I done feng shui and space clearing. Mm -hmm. um, Space clearing is where you would go in and just space clear your house and mm -hmm. get your energy all nice and flowing and set up the way you like it. Now, would that be to uh, meaning to declutter your house? Or? Yeah, that, it's like a lot of things for like the whole part, like. A big thing for everybody is the clutter. Like ener energy has to flow a certain way, but things hold a lot of negative energy. So being decluttered and having a nice clean space is very important and that really does help people a lot as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And like your door, like um, your door, your entrance to your home should always be um, welcoming, should always be welcoming and clean, clutter free, cu clutter free, and then have some like, give it something nice that it would like, like a plant or, you know, a tree or a bush or something to thank it. And like, <laughs> you can even thank your house when you're going into it of, oh, thank you, I'm very blessed to be here. Yeah, the tree, uh, it's funny that you mentioned the tree because <laughs> uh, back in uh, 2020, towards the end of the winter, you know, when nobody could have anything to do with anybody else, we had our last package of the winter of uh, grapefruit. And um, the last time we bought any early that spring, any grapefruit, my husband found three seeds that were sprouted. So he planted these three seeds in three little terracotta pots. Oh. And after a certain amount of time went by, one of them actually started to turn into a plant. 
now we have <laughs> <laughs> a grapefruit tree growing right. in, in our house. That thing must be about four to five, somewhere between four and five feet tall. <laughs> and your, prou your house probably loves that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, that tree is thriving, you yeah. know. They say put some gold on your table, on your table. Gold? Um, like, yeah, like the color, like that Just color. anything that's mm -hmm. gold colored. The gold mm -hmm. color, put that on your table and it's like thanking your house. It mm -hmm. helps mm -hmm. keep the mm -hmm. energy flowing. And, your house mm -hmm. enjoys that. Your kitchen really enjoys it. Well, color I'll tell you that grapefruit tree really loves summer. You know, we just put it out, outside in the oh, summer, nice. and <laughs> that tree just loves <laughs> loves that sunshine and outdoor fresh air. It really does. Okay, we better move along now. <laughs> different children have different special needs. Yep. Mention a few of these different ones and how you would use feng shui to help with each one. Okay, so I would go and get to know the families and the child and see what they would like. Like some sensory overload seems to be like a big thing lately that I've been working with a lot where it's just like, what are the sensory things? So it's the light, the sound, the texture. Like maybe you've had, you know, we work on like getting all of them in place. Like some kids like swings, they like that motion. Um, I have one granddaughter that absolutely loves, like, she loves the feeling of like them little fur rugs. So I make sure there's a fur rug down for her to step on first thing in the morning. She loves that sensory feel of that. So that helps set up her up for a positive day. Um, and then, you know, what, what are you looking for? Like, do you want a nice quiet space for your child? Um, what does your child want? Like, and, and then work on like color tones and stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, now that I remember it, and I wasn't thinking about it earlier, uh, when we were talking, you were talk mentioning the swing. And I, I'm just now remembering that when I was a little girl, we had a swing, just a regular swing that was just a board with the ropes <laughs> hanging up in this one spot in the house. And that was, that made it, that made it being stuck in the house because it was so much because it was winter that <laughs> made it kind of fun to be able to sit right. and swing on that swing and I don't know what there is about it but swinging for some reason makes you feel good it sure does absolutely and like even like having a little quiet corner or like a little tent in the room they love to go into just to be that quiet zen zone with a little bit of the lights like the mm -hmm. twinkle lights like mm -hmm. um children really seem to like like the Christmas lights and stuff. Yeah, the, yeah. I, I, I do remember, I remember yeah. that being a really special time of the year with the Christmas yeah. tree and the, and the Christmas lights. And um, uh, so basically that's, that's basically, uh, and, and then colors, colors will affect yeah. them. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, my next question was, does feng shui direct energy a certain way to help? And I think you've kind of explained yep, that. Yep. Yeah, so like I can explain it a little bit better too this way. So like say in your house, if you have a long hallway and a lot of doors, mm -hmm. your energy is never going to flow around the way that it should because it's got so many doors that it doesn't know what to do. And they make the chai energy balls, the little round crystals that you could hang up in the middle of that hallway, which would help keep that energy flowing. Oh, oh yeah. okay. Yeah, so you can do okay. things like that. Um, like if you have a house that, um, like you want it more uh, uh, tranquil, grounding, earthing place, make sure you put some live house plants in it, some earthing stuff to help with that, or green colors or mm -hmm. browns, the earth tone colors. Oh yeah. So, um, yeah, there's some other things, <laughs> questions I have about feng shui that I think we can have some fun with. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and one of them has to do with the toilet. Okay. <laughs> about not flushing the toilet <laughs> when the lid is open. One time I, the first time I ever heard about this was, it was actually a cartoon program about people that lived in England and 
there was something about some person said to another that if you flushed your toilet when the lid was open, all of your wealth would go down the drain. <laughs> well, I thought it was some sort of a joke or something until I actually read a little book one time on yeah, feng shui. They, they do and, really <laughs> and there, <laughs> there is something about having the toilet closed when you flush it. And would you uh, explain that to me and the viewing audience? Well, I'm not really for sure on that. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out what some people do believe that. Um, I more so go on, how is that room flowing? I'm not, your wealth going down it. It's like, so for me, I, for me, I don't choose to follow that, I guess. So I work with the Bagua, which would be a map that I would put on your floor plan in each, you have a wealth corner in your house. Mm -hmm. And I would be working on that wealth corner to see what you needed to bring wealth in by certain colors and certain things and certain crystals to bring into the, to mm -hmm. the wealth. So mm -hmm. I don't really work with that so to me that doesn't you, matter to me you, you no. don't you don't know <laughs> okay yeah well like i said only because i have heard that before i i, I heard that in that cartoon thinking it was just something funny <laughs> they slipped in there but <laughs> but then i did read something about yeah i i guess there's something though about um uh, bacteria and stuff will come flying up out of the toilet. Uh, so I guess it's not really, the bathroom's not really a good place to keep your toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is the question. <laughs> oh, okay. And another thing that I read about feng shui is uh, you should basically make sure to use, like, let's say your cook stove in your kitchen it has four burners and i have heard that you should that all of the burners should get used like pretty much equally you know um <laughs> you're looking at me funny. i have never heard this so <laughs> You know, I will, uh, my husband always, 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 when he's cooking something, he, he'll use the same burner all the time, right. the, the same front burner as far as front burners. Those are the ones that are have the biggest amount of heat and all that. And quite often, I will go over to the opposite burner on the other side right. and you're, make sure that it gets some, <laughs> gets some use too. And then I use both of the back burners right. for certain right. things. Too. You're keeping your yin and yang I'm and your fire the... element very positive. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. <Yeah>. good. <laughs> okay. Um, and um, my last question, my last fun, fun question that I had written down is, why is the layout of your house important? I've heard things about how your stairway is supposed to line up yeah. The stairway to your upstairs, how it's supposed to line up according to where your front door is. Yeah, and that goes with the whole, the north to south, the east and the west, more like the Chinese method of it. Uh, okay. I do like the whole Bagua way, more like natural earthing way, like the medicine wheel way. Okay. So I like do my concept like that way. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yes, all of them do, they are important. Like, um, it's not good like for your bed to be facing the doorway because that's not a good energy flow. So that also okay. for that. Okay. So like they say like, like say if your front door, so like if your front door went straight out to your back door and you were going straight out, that's not a good energy flow. So how you would just fix that would just be putting something there, like adding a plant, adding, like you could add one of the chai energy balls, um, adding a little furniture to come out a little more. You would just offset that. Mm -hmm. And then that changes the whole flow of it. Mm -hmm. and Positively. Where, and where would people get these chai energy bowls? Um, you can purchase them online. <laughs> Amazon. Does nobody has, around here have them no? in their shops? Oh gosh. I better have them on my website, huh? <laughs> yeah, it must be, yeah. Yeah, it was, um, okay, so about the bed, you said not to have the bed facing the door in your bedroom. Now that would mean with um, the head of the bed away from the foot of your bed. So like the, the foot of the bed shouldn't be facing straight onto your doorway. 
You okay. know, and if you unfortunately have to do that because that does happen a lot, then you could just add one of them chai energy balls, and oh, that okay. would just change that whole energy okay. up of that. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, what do we say uh, to people who uh, don't believe in this energy flow stuff? And I know there, I know there are them. Now, I, I remember somebody telling me uh, one time that uh, she never somebody uh, who lives in uh, Casadega, which is right there by Lilydale. Um, I remember uh, saying to her, if I wasn't so busy in the summer, I would go, uh, I would probably go over to Lilydale once in a while, you know, in the summer. And she goes, oh, I never go there. That place is evil, you know, oh, and stuff like that. <laughs> so what do we, how do we convince people who might be watching this TV show that this isn't a lot of imaginary stuff that we're talking about? And my philosophy is intention goes where energy flows. What kind of energy do you want? What, so it's pretty much like a soul level. What does your soul want? Mm -hmm. Where, do mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So you're gonna believe in this or wanna practice it. Mm -hmm. If you want peace, harmony, tranquil, you want, you wanna help someone, you want to serve, you know, you want wealth, you want all of these, so then you're gonna be more apt to that, I think. So I, actually, it's gonna be on a personal level. Are you gonna reach everybody? No. Are you gonna reach the ones that really want to go with it? Yeah, right, is, mm -hmm. yeah. So it's, it's just uh, uh, help, it's, help people that yeah. wanna be, uh, use these t types of things to help themselves. And, right, right. And uh, if people don't want to believe it or anything, that's, right. all, that's okay too. It's their okay. Right, absolutely, whatever mm -hmm. someone chooses is their choice, it must be that. That must not be their sole mission. That's mm -hmm. not, you know, mm -hmm. and their energy must be just fine. <laughs> yeah, um, I think of those of us who think maybe like you do and I do, I I think we're referred to as old souls. Old souls, old yes. Souls. I've been told that many a time. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, um, we've been here a lot more yeah. often. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Of course, then that leads into reincarnation, which a lot of people think we're nuts if we believe in that. But anyway, <laughs> but uh, anyway, so um, yeah, I think that uh, I think it's it's a really interesting subject. Is there anything else that you can tell us about the feng shui placement? Um, uh, Let's see, what, what, what should we, how can we help people who uh, want to declutter their houses, but they feel guilty about... Or overwhelmed. I think a lot of it is, is not is, really, you know, they feel guilty because it's that bad, but it's the overwhelm of, where do I begin? Where do I start? So like if you set an egg timer for 23 minutes a day and start cleaning that one room. And I would say start with the le least cluttered room. The Do you least know what I, cluttered The least one. cluttered. Oh, really? And then, uh -huh. yeah, start with the least cluttered because it's not gonna be overwhelming or too uh -huh. much. You start with the least cluttered room, you set that egg timer for 23 minutes, you clean. When it's done, you quit. And as you will find every day, you set the egg timer, you'll be getting more done and more done. And before you know it, and you're like, I'm working over that egg timer because I want this room done. And then once you get one room decluttered and you get it the way that you want it, the piece that comes, you'll be like, oh, then you'll want to do more. You know what I mean? So start little and then move on. Don't just start with this big, huge project and get overwhelmed and then you can't do it, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be yeah. really hard yeah. if, yes. if people have a lot that needs to be yep. done done in there. Start homes. with your doorway, your doorway, mm -hmm. your entranceway, or your home. Start with there, I would say, like start with that mud room. Start with the entranceway, get that, you know, cleaned out and um, cluttered free. So when you come home every day, start thanking your house for being there and then go on in and before you know it, you'll be wanting to clutter free it and your house will be happy. <laughs> yeah, I've heard various yeah. different things about decluttering, like um, uh, some people say that are like experts on it, they say for every five books that you want to keep, get rid of one book. 
Oh, okay. So yeah. I, I just go with, you know, if you're not using it, you haven't used it in a long time, or who else could benefit from it? If yeah. you're not using it, who else could benefit from it? Donate it. Right. Donate it to something right. where it right. could really be uh, getting used instead of just studying there. Yeah, because sometimes, sometimes people um, have things yep. that they don't but, use and that they know that they're never going to use. And... Um, but it's in something that's in that's nice enough and in good right. enough shape right. that somebody might as well be using it. Correct. So either try to sell it on marketplace or donate it or have a garage sale. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let somebody else utilize it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those garage sales, those yard sales, are so hard to <laughs> hard to get ready to do. So I haven't done very many of them <laughs> in my lifetime because. They tend to be kind of a nuisance, and a lot of the stuff you still have left over <laughs> after, after <laughs> the yard sale is over with. So, um, yeah. so donating seems to be donating. Yeah, seems to be maybe the best bet. Yep, I think other organizations lately really could use the donations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like if something if something doesn't fit you anymore and you know you're never right, going to be right, that size right. again, you might as well. Yep. And the, you have clothing that's right. you know in really good shape, and yep. you might as well uh, might as well pass it along right. to somebody <laughs> else. Yeah, uh, it's it's called sharing your wealth. <laughs> right. Sharing your yep. wealth. So. Um, Especially if you can't afford to actually give money donations right. to uh, the thrift shops. Like, there's a thrift shop up here in Mayville that benefits their food pantry. Yeah. Um, the money from the thrift shop um, buys f the buys food for the food pantry, so um, that people that need help with having enough food can go there to get food. Nice. And then uh, there's one over in Westfield called the Thrifty Kitty. Oh. Uh, there's, well, the upstairs of the building is a cat shelter, and the downstairs is a thrift shop, and the money that's brought in from selling things from the thrift store, um, that supports the cats. <laughs> Nice, very nice. See, so yeah. uh, and that's too with like with feng shui. Um, you don't need to go out and buy things or change. Sometimes you just need to like move things. Sometimes you just need to move certain furniture to a different room or certain way. Just rearrange it or take something from the living room and take it to the dining room. Like if you need some metal to balance out the energy in there or wood. Your, oh, the energies, okay. You know what I mean? So you can just feng shui with what you already have. It's not necessarily. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so balance, fun, balancing with feng shui has to do with mixing different materials? Yeah. Yeah. Would you so, explain yeah, that? Yeah, that goes back to your um, the medicine wheel, your north, south, your east, or west. They represent the water, the fire, the air, the earth, which is, you know, your metals and like um, for the earth, it's your grounding, your plants and your green colors and wood that would represent that. For the fire would represent any um, your fire stuff. So anything fiery. Like a candle? Yes, any, mm -hmm. yeah, like a mm -hmm. candle. And then mm -hmm. for um, metal would be like metal furniture, metal desk, you know, mm -hmm. anything metal like that. Like in a lot of, um, Lighting fixtures have a lot of metal oh, in it, yeah. which would be good oh, for yeah, that. Yeah. So, like, yeah. So then you would just make sure that that's all balanced out in your space. Yeah, you know, sometimes uh, I've noticed by rearranging a room, you can actually wind up making it smaller. I've noticed. Oh yeah. You know, like <laughs> yeah. uh, just by rearranging yeah. the yeah. furniture, it's like you might have a space that's halfway decent. You know, and then you rearrange the furniture, and then all of a sudden, just by rearranging the furniture, you don't bring anything else into the room or anything. All of a sudden, you just have kind of a narrow pathway through the room. So, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, anyways, uh, we've got like three and a half minutes okay. left. All so, right. um, 
let's see, we'll have to think of something else to say about Well, feng I think shui. like an important rule of thumb to remember with your house with the whole feng shui, your home is supposed to be the sense of belonging, a safe place, harmony, and inner peace. So just think of that and look at that when you're like your home. And that concept when you're like um, decorating it, rearranging it, painting your colors. Um, what are you trying to get out of this space? What do you want from this space? Mm -hmm. You know, um, a few weeks back, I interviewed somebody who is uh, um, going to be graduating from law school oh. in May and uh, taking the bar exam in July. And she is going into the type of law that she is going into is a type of law that uh, helps people um, who are at risk of being evicted and becoming homeless oh, and, nice. and so forth. And she, um, she wound up buying me, having a book sent to me from uh, Amazon, I think it was. She had this book um, sent to me called Evicted by a person named Matthew Desmond. And it, uh, I mean, all of the stories, all of the families he follows in the book were re are real families, but he's changed the name okay. names to protect their privacy and probably the privacy of the landlords too, for that matter. But he's written this about uh, the city of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and some of the to begin with, the conditions a lot of these poor people have to live in because it's all they can afford is ridiculous, but yeah. the landlords can actually toss them, have them tossed out on the street for just tiny little uh, things. Even the fact that the people call them because repairs need to be done with the plumbing and this and that and the right. other thing. Right. And, um, you know, it, it's just it's just hideous. Uh, um, uh, the I mean, the landlords will sometimes evict people just for that. Right. You right. know. Yeah. And then they so. and then they don't even usually have much to begin with. Right. So right. that is sad. Yeah. That it really. Sad. It really is sad. It's. Uh, yeah. And not not only that, but how does somebody who doesn't really have much of anything increase good the good feng shui around their house too you know it's right right so you don't need to have a lot of money to have good feng shui that's mm -hmm. very important to, yeah mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. you don't um would you like me to show the tapping points again just yes. one more time okay one and more do, time yep okay so you would do your sequence of how do i feel right now on a scale of one to ten write it down or say it out loud and then you would just start with whatever your statement is like even though even though whatever your concern is, then you will go to your brow, your eyebrow. Yep, just use your fingers and just keep tapping and say a positive statement. Then your next tapping point would be the side of your eye and then underneath your eye. And, and I just do these tapping things for like five to 10 and then under your nose, under your chin and your, your collarbone, then your underarm then you would take a deep breath in and out. And then you would assess it. Now that was one round and then you would keep doing these rounds until you would get to be where you felt you wanted to be mm -hmm. on that scale of one to 10. And just remember, if you can't use these because you're um, a little bit nervous and probably you always got your hands or your wrists, mm -hmm. they can work. Or even like if you're driving in a car and you're starting to fall asleep and you're on a long travel and you start to fall asleep, you can just start doing this. This breaks up your energy. Let's get your energy moving, just tapping on that collarbone. You know, I am awake. I am going to make the drive. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hate to say it, uh, and I'm going to have to sign you up because there's some other topics you know okay. a lot about. Okay. But I want to say thank you. Thank you for having for, me. For uh, appearing on Fresh Perspectives today, and I'll see those of you in the viewing audience on the next episode.